at the end of the flood, there's the moment where Hashem says, okay, it's time to come out. But the verse says, that Elohim remembered Noach. Now, I'm specifically saying Elohim rather than translating as we normally would, you know, which is to say, by Yizkor Elohim, that Hashem remembered Noach. It says, Elohim remembered Noach. So immediately Rashi raises an eyebrow and he says, hang on a second, this doesn't make any sense. Why does it not make any sense? Okay, let's see if we can put this all together. We know that there are various names of Hashem that are supposed to represent various attributes, right? So does anybody remember what the attribute associated with the name Elohim is? We have the name Yud Kei Vav Kei, which we normally just generically say Hashem. So that's got an attribute associated with it. And we have the name Elohim. These are the two most common names of Hashem that we use. And so they represent the two most common attributes of Hashem. So Elohim is the one that represents strictness and judgment. And you see that in, in various places, even to the extent that when the Torah speaks about a base din, it calls the group of judges Elohim. Now that tells you very clearly that the name Elohim is associated with the attribute of justice. Now here we're talking about <coughs> Noach and the animals have been floating around for a year. And now Hashem remembers them. Vayizkor Elohim as Noach. So would you say that this is a moment of just of judgment, of strictness? Not really, right? Because he's about to tell them not only that they can get out of the ark, which would be obviously a sign of compassion, but what's going to follow immediately after this is he's then going to make a covenant with them that he's never going to destroy the world again, that there's never going to be another major flood to this extent. So that all sounds like compassion. That's why Rashi immediately raises the question. He says, why are we using the name Elohim, which is a name of strictness, in the context of this verse, which is surely a verse of compassion? In other words, it would have been more realistic or more common, more aligned with the principles of the Torah to say, Vayizkor Hashem es noyach. That's what it should have said, because Hashem is the name of compassion. So Rashi says, I'll explain why. What do you think Noach was doing? All that time in the ark, besides the uh, caring for the animals, which was a very overwhelming job. But what do you think he was doing? He was davening. He was davening to get out of there. Even though there are views that say that life in the ark was very idyllic and it was a messianic experience. And so he didn't necessarily want to leave. But he was definitely davening to Hashem to protect his family, to protect him, to protect the, the species of creatures that he had taken onto the ark. So all of that davening, and particularly the davening to be able to repopulate the earth and to be able to, you know, re-establish society, eventually that davening had an impact. And the impact, and this is what Rashi teaches us, and this is such a fascinating principle, Rashi teaches us that when people daven and when people do teshuva, you can transform midas hadin, the attribute of divine strictness, to become midas harachamim, to become the attribute of compassion. So therefore, even though the name is Elohim, which is a name associated with divine strictness, that energy of strictness becomes positive and becomes compassionate because of our efforts, because of, uh, of, of our davening and so forth. So that's a, that's a lesson. It's not just a story about Noach. It's a lesson for us in life. Okay? Make sense? All right. Let's go back a bit. That's the story from the end of the flood. Let's go back to the beginning of the flood. Does anybody remember, because it was in last week's parasha, at the end of the parasha, where Hashem warns them that there's going to be a flood, or whether He warns them or not, where Hashem basically says in the Torah that there's going to be a flood. Does anybody remember what Hashem said? Why is there going to be a flood? Remember why? Why is it going to be a flood? Because, no, because of Hamas. Exactly. Because of Hamas. People were behaving badly. Correct. It says, because the people behaved badly, because there was this abundance of bad between people on earth, therefore Hashem says, I am going to wipe everybody out. Okay? He's going to create a massive mikveh, the, the largest mikveh project in the whole of history. Okay, that's what he says, right? Now there, would you say that the decision to 
annihilate humanity and actually all living creatures. Would you say that that's a decision that's coming from a perspective of compassion or from a perspective of judgment? Judgment. Judgment, right? What's the name that's supposed to be linked to judgment? Elohim. Elohim. So you'd expect in that pasuk, you'd expect it to say, Vayoymer Elohim. That's what you'd expect. That Elohim, which is the name of justice or judgment, says, I'm going to annihilate all the humans from the face of the earth. That's what you'd expect. Have a look at the verse. What does it say? Vayoymer Hashem. It uses the name of compassion. Even though the message is a message of destruction and devastation. But maybe, he, well, his thoughts were, I'm going to save. More That's why to, to all the people fine, to the ark. Fine, so then when he says the part that I'm going to save you, go build an ark, that's when he should use the name Hashem, which is the name of compassion. But when he makes the statement, that I'm going to destroy humanity, that's not a place for the word Hashem. That's not a place for compassion. That should have been Vayomer Elohim. So, what do you think Rashi says about that? Because Rashi is the one who's raised the issue over here with Vayizkor Elohim, that it seems misplaced to use the name of justice when you're talking about compassion. So you'd expect that Rashi is going to obviously have the same question <clears throat> when the name of compassion is used in a, in a situation of strict justice, right? That's what you'd expect. So what does Rashi say on that verse? Wow. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Not a word. Now that's very strange. Because surely the same glaring question that he has here in Noach, which compelled him to give a, an explanation that it is possible that if we actually do what we should and we daven, etc., we can transform Hashem's judgment into compassion. So he felt that that was very compelling here. Surely he should have addressed it the first time the issue came up, which was in the previous Pasuk, where the name Hashem is misplaced because Hashem is compassion. It's talking about destruction. And by the way, one of the rules of how Rashi works is that he'll always address an issue the first time that issue becomes an issue. That's how he works. You can see this across the board. Yes, okay, we've just started learning the Torah again, so maybe we don't remember all Rashi's rules. In it. But that's what Rashi usually does. He usually addresses an issue the first time the issue arises. The fact that he hasn't addressed it in last week's parasha seems to imply that maybe it's not an issue. And if it's not an issue, why does it become an issue in this parasha where we use the name of compassion, sorry, the name of justice in a moment of compassion? Okay, so that's the question that we have to address. Why is this a valuable question? Not just because of the nuance of what Rashi has to say. You know why this is a big question? This is a massive question. This is a question that should affect everything that we think about life. Why is it such a big question? Why do you think it's such a big question? We're talking about two possible channels, or two possible energies that Hashem uses. Strictness, otherwise known as justice, and compassion. Why do you think it's such a big question? Because we always want Hashem to be compassionate. Exactly. Because we would love to live in a world of divine compassion. No? And none of us is putting up our hand to say, bring on the strictness. We'd much rather live in an environment of compassion. So the big question that lies beneath this question is, how does Hashem run His world? Is it mainly a world of compassion? Or is it mainly a world of strictness? In other words, which one surprises us? I think it's compassionate. Okay, that's what you think, right? Okay, now you've got to prove it. Well, it, it's easy. If yeah. it was in the beginning, I think He wanted to make create the world. Oh, like good. Good. In the beginning, he wanted and to create the world. He saw it wouldn't work. He saw, well, okay. So let's, let's analyze that. Because Rashi tells us this information as well. And that's going to set the stage for this conversation. You see, it's a really, really important concept for us to, to understand. Because it's going to, it's going to inform our perspective on everything in life. There are many people walking this earth, constantly looking over their shoulder, waiting for the lightning bolt. Because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And God is a vengeful God, and I'm in a lot of trouble, and I'm going to be smitten. <laughs> right? And uh, no, Forget about getting him, even here in this world. You know, often I have people say, I did this, and I, now as a result of that, do you think I'm going to have bad luck? And do you think my business is going to fail? And do you think that, whatever. 
There are many people who walk around their whole life believing that we are on this very fine line. And if we just step out of line, boom. And then there are other people, and I think probably the people around this table belong to this category, who say, what do you mean? Hashem is compassionate. Hashem is tolerant. Hashem is forgiving. Now, this is not a matter of our opinions. We have to know empirically which is the reality. How does Hashem run His world? Does He run His world with strictness or does He run His world with compassion? Which is the overriding energy of the world? As much as we would like it to be compassion, we need to know that this is the case. So now let's go to what Gershon just said. Right at the beginning of the Torah, in the first words of creation, which name of Hashem is used? The name of judgment or the name of compassion? So how does it go? Bereshis. Bara in the beginning created who? Elokim. Elokim. The name of strictness. <coughs> Oi gewalt. <laughs> That's not good news. Because that sounds like the way that Hashem originally started the world was first and foremost with strict judgment. And if that's the case, then we are walking on a knife's edge and we better be careful. And whoever came five minutes late for, for Shachris is, isn't going to be in trouble because, you know, it's a very exacting, very precise kind of world. That's what it sounds like. Barashis, Bara Elohim. But Rashi says something based on the teachings of our sages that can calm us a little bit. He says, it's a famous Midrash that Rashi quotes, the original thought of how to create the world was to create a world that is that strict. That was the original, original plan. But Hashem knew, obviously, that as much as that might be the ideal, that's not practical. It's not going to be a sustainable world. Because literally people would be getting struck by lightning every few minutes because let's let's be honest about the human condition. We don't do what we're supposed to do. So <laughs> stuff would happen and it wouldn't be a sustainable world. Therefore, now what Rashi says next is incredibly important because you know <clears throat> Rashi is very precise in his commentary and the words that he chooses are very specifically chosen and sometimes he chooses words that are a little different from the original source that he's quoting and he does so because he wants to drive home a message like in this case because the original statement of our sages is shitaf imo sarachamim that after hashem planned the world with all of the strictness he then added into the mix and he partnered with the strictness he partnered com uh, compassion which means almost to sound like you know like hashem mitigated the strictness Rashi adds one word. Not only shittif, not only did Hashem add compassion into the recipe, but he says hikdim, that Hashem prioritized compassion over strictness in the recipe for the world. Now, obviously, Rashi has to be able to prove that because it's a nice theory. How do we know it's true? So, Bereshis bara Elohim is the opening sentence of creation where only the name Elohim, the name of strictness, appears. But in the, sum, in the summary of creation, at the end of the story of creation, then it says that all of creation happened. Beyom on the day, Asois Hashem Elohim Eretz V'Shomai. On the day that Hashem Elohim, which tells us that there's a partnership of compassion, the name Hashem, and strictness, the name Elohim, made earth and heaven. But it puts the name Hashem first. So from that Rashi derives a principle, which is that the planning of the world, the ideal of the world, which is described in the first verse, is that ideally everything should run like clockwork. And ideally everybody should be exactly perfect. And ideally we should be held to the highest standards. But realistically... When it actually came to creation, beyond Asois, at the time that Hashem made the world, Hashem made the world first Hashem with the element of compassion, and only after that introduced uh, Din, the element of justice. Okay? It's a very important perspective. But then why did he give us a Yetzirah? Oh, good. Good question. The question is not only why did he give us a Yetzirah, the question is why do we need that strictness in the first place? And the answer is should be actually a fairly easy answer for us to understand. The reason Hashem created the world was not for freebies. 
I know maybe there are many people in today's world who believe that everything is coming to them and that they should just be able to complain about something and the whole of society should dance circles around them. But that's not actually how Hashem created the world. The way Hashem created the world was that we should earn whatever is coming to us. So that means that you've got to go out there and work in order to earn a living. It also means that you have to invest effort in order to grow as a human, which includes spiritual growth, which includes developing our connection to Hashem. There are no free downloads. Therefore, if the goal is that we should be able to achieve things, then achievement only works if there is some system of checks and balances and some system of choices and consequences. If those didn't exist, then there is no concept of achievement. In other words, you know what they say about the average Jewish boy grows up and he leaves home and he becomes independent, typically by the age of 30. (laughs) Because, you know, we get a little bit mollycoddled. And you looked after at home and there's free meals. I mean, I even have heard stories of people that are already in the corporate world and their mother still makes their lunch. Right? So if you live in that reality, you don't actually achieve anything. How can you achieve if, if you're being mollycoddled? And how can you be achieved if you're not held accountable for the choices that you make? And how could you be held accountable for choices if you don't have the ability to make choices? That's why Hashem wants a system of justice and judgment in the world, which includes the possibility of a Yetzirah where we could make the wrong decisions, which gives a value then to the right decisions that we make and makes those decisions real decisions if there are consequences. So that's why there has to be this element of din, this element of Elohim, this element of judgment in the world. It's critical because without that, we actually cannot achieve anything meaningful. That was very relevant with Adam and Eve. Exactly. Right from the beginning, right from Adam and Eve, right? If they did not have the ability to make a choice and to face the consequences of that choice, there'd be no value to human endeavor. And you can even argue that Adam and Eve set themselves up so that humans would understand how all of this works and how we have to take responsibility and there truly are consequences. But that's a conversation for another time. So there has to be din in this world. There has to be a system of consequences and a system of being held accountable and a system of judgment. But the overriding theme of the world has to be compassion. That's how Hashem sets it up. That the overriding theme is compassion, which means this. It means even when there are consequences, and even if we are going to be held accountable for the things that we've done, which were not right, that will always be softened by compassion. In other words, let's put that into terms we could all relate to. If you want to be a good parent, you have to discipline your kids. And not only discipline your kids in the sense of being some kind of an ogre. If you want to be a good parent, you have to allow your children the opportunity to make choices, including the wrong choices, and then allow them to have to face off to the responsibilities of those choices. To handhold our children and to do everything for them is not doing them a favor. Now, if you really want to raise healthy children, you want to give them the opportunity to be able to make and own their choices, you have to line that with compassion. Meaning to say, if they make a poor choice and they land up in an uncomfortable circumstance, you're not supposed to sit back and say, well, you made your bed, lie in it. There's supposed to be some compassion there as well. And in the same sense, when Hashem designed His world, even those decisions of consequences, which includes punishments, all have to be signed off, so to speak, by compassion. Meaning to say, there can never be a consequence that is absolutely devastating. It's always got to have an aspect of compassion associated with it. That's how Hashem designed the world because the overriding energy of the world is the energy of compassion. Okay, that's the principle. That's why when Hashem says He's going to destroy the world, if we hear the name of Hashem's compassion in that, that's not a surprise because even the worst things that are going to happen in our world have to be tinged with compassion. So even when Hashem is saying, I'm going to destroy it, like you said, it's going to be a mikvah. It's not going to be devastating where that's the end of humanity and now we're going to create a new species. It's going to be tinged with compassion. We're going to save the good people, allow them the opportunity to rebuild the world. It's going to cleanse the world. It's going to elevate the world. So Rashi's not surprised when in the story of 
that there's a flood coming and there's got to be devastation. He's not surprised that the word that's used over there is the name of Hashem's compassion because that's how the world works. It's the key message we have to know that even in the most difficult times, even the most harsh times, there will always be an overriding sense of divine compassion. So Rashi doesn't comment at that point. Where he is surprised is in this discussion. Here you've got Noach with all the animals on the ark. They've been floating around, going in circles. I mean, I don't know how far they traveled in their course, right? Bobbing up and down for a year. By years ago, now Hashem's going to remember them and take them out of there and allow them to start, as the Midrash says, that, Mi- that Noach saw a whole new world. It was the inspiration for Disney, right? So a whole new world. And he was then able to populate that world and to, to, to grow things in that world. There you would expect the word Hashem because that's obvious compassion. Now Rash is scratching his head. Why here in a story of compassion do we now bring up the name of Elohim, which is the name of strictness? That doesn't make sense. It makes sense to bring the name of compassion when you're being strict because you should never be that harsh. You should never be that overwhelming. You should never be that, <coughs> that uh, you know, black and white. There should always be room for compassion. That makes sense. But in a time of compassion, why are you using a name that is a name of strictness? So therefore, Rashi says, guess what? That's going to teach us something new that we did not realize. And that is not only does Hashem have a system of checks and balances, and that system is also balanced by compassion. So even when Hashem is going to mete out consequences, it will still be softened by compassion. That's true. But guess what? There's something even more than that. What's more than that? We have an effect on which energy is flowing into this world. Meaning, Hashem typically uses two types of energy. Strictness or compassion. Even when He's using strictness, He involves compassion as well. But that basically means that people have misbehaved. They need to be punished. So the energy that's going to flow into the world will be a strict energy because they're going to be punished. It's just that it will be calibrated by Hashem's compassion how much of that strict energy can come into the world. But here we're learning something else. When we daven, because that's what Rashi tells us, Noach davened in the ark. And we do good deeds. We're able not only to ensure that there is a healthy energy flowing into the world from the realm of compassion but davening is so powerful and mitzvahs are so powerful that you can actually take Elohim which is the energy of strictness and change it so that it also becomes an energy of compassion that's the power of davening not just to switch off the energy of justice or judgment and instead allow the energy of compassion. But the name Elohim, the name of strictness, will become the source of compassion. That's what davening can achieve. With that in mind, we should have a whole different attitude when we go daven, (laughs) as we're about to do. You've got to be praying for something specific there. You can't just daven and think that everything is going to change. Fair. Fair point. So you obviously have to you have to be specific about what it is that you're davening for. I think that's a that's a valid point. But the the message over here is that Hashem has invited us into His space that we could actually redefine what energy is flowing into this world. Not only mitigate the type of energy that it shouldn't, shouldn't be too harsh, which is what we saw in the story of of the beginning of the flood, but we can actually change negative energy, the whole energy of the flood into positive energy. Now that's going to have a very important set of messages for us, which we have to learn about, you know, in terms of how we live our lives. And that, please God, we'll have a look at tomorrow.